Hey everybody, welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In today's episode, we're going to take a deep dive on what's called the three fund portfolio. It's a simple, low cost yet powerful, and I would even say sophisticated way to invest. I think it should represent the core of anyone's portfolio. I can tell you it represents the core of our portfolio. And that wouldn't change if I had a billion dollars to invest. It's funny how when you, if you get to grow your assets and you have more and more money, all these advisors want to, they want to get all fancy on us and slice and dice your portfolio into 15 or 20 or 50 different funds. And it's a bunch of nonsense. A three fund portfolio gives us everything we need to invest our money, whether we're investing a thousand bucks, a hundred thousand, a million, 10 million, it doesn't matter. So here's what we're going to do in today's video. First, we're going to talk about what the three fund portfolio is. We're going to talk about, is it diversified? We're going to actually look at the numbers. And then we're going to look at the historical returns. How has this three fund portfolio performed over the last uh, few, few decades? So that's the first part. Then we're going to look at actually how to create it. We're going to look specifically at uh, how, what, how much do we allocate to each of the three funds that we're going to talk about that make up the three fund portfolio. That's going to be the first thing. And the second thing is, what funds should we use? I mean, should we use Fidelity, Vanguard, you know, what, what BlackRock? What, what funds should we use to build this portfolio? We're going to talk about that. Then I'm going to actually walk through building it for you. I mean, it, it couldn't get any easier. I'm going to build it for you in M1 Finance. It's one of the, I guess, newer online brokers. If I were starting today from scratch, I would use M1 Finance without question. And that may surprise some of you because you know I'm a, a diehard Vanguard fan, but here's the deal. You can invest in Vanguard funds in M1 Finance. You don't actually have to open an account at Vanguard. And particularly for beginners, there's good reasons, frankly, to favor M1 Finance over some of the more traditional brokers. We're going to talk about that. Then, I told you this was a deep dive, then we're going to look at ways you can actually supercharge uh, the three fund portfolio, add a few more things to it that I think give you a good chance of increasing your returns over the long term without significantly increasing volatility. Okay, so with that, let's get right to it. And the start is, what is a three fund portfolio? It's really simple. It's a portfolio in which we just have three, could be mutual funds or ETFs. One covers US stocks, that's stocks of publicly traded companies that are headquartered in the United States, right? So think Amazon and, and, and Apple and Believe it or not, a lot of companies you and I have never heard of. So that's that's bucket one, we could call it, right? Or mutual fund number one. Then we want one that covers all companies headquartered outside of the United States. So some sort of global or international fund. That's number two. And the third one is simply a bond fund. And here you can get all fancy with it. I mean, there are emerging market bond funds, international bond funds. But folks in the United States, I think it's just best to stick with some sort of U.S. total market bond fund. You'll, you'll invest in some uh, government bonds, some corporate bonds, but you can do it all within a single fund. And that's it. Those three funds and we're done. It's really that simple. Now, we do use index funds and that's important because index funds, well, for two reasons. They're a lot less expensive than actively managed funds and they, they outperform. Uh, so, and, and usually over the long term, even compared to really good actively managed funds, index funds tend to outperform the actively managed funds by the cost, right? The difference in the fees. That's usually roughly the difference. And, you know, when you're paying five or 10 basis points for an index fund and you're paying 1% or more for an actively managed fund, that difference, it may seem small, but if you've watched this channel long enough, you know that it'll result in a loss of hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars over the long term. All right, so that's it. That's the basic three fund portfolio. I wish I could make it sound fancier and more complicated, but it just isn't. And uh, yet it can actually give you an incredibly diverse portfolio and one that has excellent returns. So let's sort of dive into that now. How should we think about the diversity of a three fund portfolio? I'm gonna actually turn on my monitor here for you. We are looking at one of the funds you might use. We're gonna look at a lot of different ones here in a minute, but one of the funds you might use to build the three fund portfolio. This is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. And let me actually show you how I got here. I know this, the, the ticker, which is right here, VTSAX. I know it because I own shares of this fund. So you could just Google the ticker 
and you're going to get a nice snapshot of the fund. And here's the link to the Vanguard where we were just at, and we're back there. So that's how I got to this screen. And if we want to know, one question might be, well, it's just one fund. I mean, how many stocks can it really invest in? Well, we can actually figure that out. If we just go to the portfolio tab and we scroll down, well, there it is. Number of stocks. I mean, they couldn't make it easier. They put it right there. 3,640 companies. So in just one fund, you invest in over 3,600 companies. And if we want to look at fees, and this is just, I think, extraordinary. Look at the cost. It's four basis points. You, you, get in, you can invest in over 3,600 funds for just 0.04%. It's extraordinary. Now, so that's an example of one of the funds, right, that you could invest in in a three-fund portfolio with over 3,600 uh, stocks. Let's look at the international version, which I think is VTIAX. I should know because I think I own shares of this one too. Uh, yep, here it is. So we'll go to the Vanguard page again. And so this could be uh, the second fund in our example, right? And it's going to cover the international stocks. And if we go to the portfolio, we'll see this is going to have even more. Yep, 7,000s right here. 7,361 stocks are in this fund. And the fees, just 11 basis points right here. Just extraordinary. Uh, we could do the bonds just to sort of close this out. VBTLX, I own shares of this as well, just full disclosure. And go to the total bond market. Again, we're looking at Vanguard. And if we pop over to the portfolio, by the way, I can tell you now this is going to have even more because a bond fund, there are a lot of bonds out there. So let's see. Yep, yeah, 10,025 bonds. And if we go to the fees, could be a tad higher. No, five basis points. So, uh, I mean, that, that's, I think, pretty extraordinary, right? You've got three funds. Think about it. We've got over 10,000 stocks and over 10,000 bonds uh, with just three funds that cost four basis points, five basis points, and I think it was, what, 11 basis points. So uh, here's the thing to keep in mind. You cannot determine the diversity of a portfolio by simply looking at the number of funds. I've seen advisors, and it just, it angers me. Anyway, they'll put a client in like 20 different funds. They'll charge the client one, one and a half percent. The average expense ratio of these funds is one, one and a half percent. And they're no more, and then oftentimes less diversified than what I just showed you on the screen with a three fund portfolio. Frankly, I think that's criminal. In any event, I'll get off my soapbox. A three fund portfolio is a beautiful thing. Credible diversity, it's simple, it's easy to manage. Can you imagine trying to rebalance a portfolio with 20 funds? Actually, M1 Finance makes that easy. That's another story, we'll look at it. But still, with just three funds, it's about as easy as it, it can get. It's low cost, it's, it's, I think, just an excellent way to build, if not your entire portfolio, at least the core uh, of your portfolio. Now. Having said all of that, the big question is, well, what are the returns? So let's go back to the screen here. And I'm going to uh, pop over here to what's called the Portfolio Visualizer. It's a free tool, and uh, I use it a lot. And they actually make it easy to see the historical returns of a three-fund portfolio. You can actually compare three, three different portfolios, and we're going to use that feature in a minute. But to start with, if you click this button, you can customize this. You can pick whatever asset class you want and what percentage and so forth and so on. But there's also some sort of uh, uh, pre-portfolios uh, that they sort of uh, pre-populated. And you can just select from them, right? And one of them is the Bogleheads 3 Fund Portfolio. If you're not familiar with the Bogleheads, it's named after Jack Bogle, the founder of Vanguard. They have an incredible forum. It's just an incredible group of people that they, they, they help out new investors. But you can Google Bogleheads and you just get a ton of wonderful information. I'm a huge fan. In any event, if we just click that, it pre-populates not only the asset classes, and there they are, right? We've already talked about them, U.S. stocks, global stocks, total U.S. bonds. And they've populated a percentage. We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is sort of the standard three-fund portfolio 50% in U.S. stocks, 30% in global stocks, 20% in bonds. Now, we're going to look at this from 1972 to, to, to the current year, 2021. That's as far back as the data goes, but it's, it's plenty 
long enough, but keep that date in mind. We're going to come back to it in a minute. We're going to assume an initial $10,000 investment, and we're not going to assume any additional investments. So how did this portfolio do? Click the Analyze Portfolio button. First thing I want to point out is, notice this. The results don't begin until January 1987, even though if we come back up here, we set it to begin in 1972. What's going on? Well, you can see the explanation here. One of the asset classes we were using, total U.S. bond market, it's this one right here, right? They don't have data going back to 1972. They only have data going back to January 1987. And so sometimes you may want to have a longer period. The tool adjusts according to the data that it has. For our purposes, that's fine. We're still looking at over 30 years. And we can see a $10,000 investment would grow to over 168 grand and have a this stands for compound annual growth rate of 8.64%. If we think about it, that kind of makes sense. Stocks over the long term generally return about 10%, uh, but we also have bonds in this portfolio, 20% allocated to bonds to, to dampen a little bit of the volatility so that we can sleep at night. And so that's our co compound annual growth rate. Excellent returns. Uh, I, would, I, I can't imagine any active manager with the same asset allocation who has outperformed that uh, return over the last 30 years. Now, remember this number, 8.64%. I want to come up here and make a slight change to our assumptions. Most of us don't invest a lump sum at the beginning of our career and then never invest again. At least no one that I know of does that. We're putting some money away in our 401k every month, maybe an IRA, maybe taxable accounts. Well, we can model that with this tool. So let's contribute an amount. We're going to say we're going to contribute, we'll call it 500 bucks a month. Obviously, you can use this tool and change the assumptions all you'd like. We'll adjust the contributions for inflation, so that's good. And we'll make it monthly instead of annually. And uh, we're, we're rebalancing the portfolio annually, that's good. Remember, our compound annual growth rate was 8.64%. Now watch, watch what happens. It jumps to 16.12%. Holy cow, that's huge. And look at our balance. It goes, you know, it, it was up to like 168 grand. You know, we invest 500 bucks a month and it jumps to 1.6 million. It's like, so clearly this calculator is broken. It's not broken. The calculator is working just fine. All right, back to the calculator. First, it shows us the power of compounding, even over relatively small amounts of money, uh, 500 bucks a month. And the reason the compound annual growth rate changes is because when you start to invest a stream of money on, say, a monthly basis, um, you're investing in good markets and bad markets. We can look down here. There were different crashes, right? This was in the 08, 09 period. Um, this was the tech bubble uh, when it burst. So uh, you're investing in really bad times as well as good times, and that's going to affect your return. We all know it's best to invest uh, when the market is down. I think for most of us, we just dollar cost average, and that affects the compound annual growth rate of a portfolio. So the, the, but the real takeaway is, Three fund portfolio has done exceptionally well over the last, in this case, more than three decades. We could go back further. There are other ways to model uh, the three fund portfolio, and it does very, very well. So that's how it's performed over the last 30 plus years. Now, let's sort of transition into, that's great, Rob. How do I actually create one? And we're, I want to begin with the asset allocation. So let's actually go back to the, the portfolio visualizer. Remember, we pre-formatted this or pre-programmed it, if you will, just by using the, uh, the Bogleheads three fund portfolio. And it automatically filled in uh, these percentages. The biggest question, and this is whether you, true whether you use a three fund portfolio or something else, the most important question we're going to ask as investors is our asset allocation between stocks and bonds. That's going to be more important than uh, international versus domestic, small cap versus large cap. Those are important questions too, but they are not as important as stocks versus bonds. So that's really the first question we all need to answer for ourselves. Let's make some, uh, some different assumptions. Let's first imagine a 90-10. Remember, this is 80-20. The 50 and the 30 are both for stocks. That adds to 80. The 20 is bonds. So let's do a 90-10. So we could do that by, oh, we'll say 55 here, 35 here, and then we'll just lower this to 10. 
All right, that's our 90-10 portfolio. And then we can go the other way for a 70-30 portfolio. So this will go to 45, right? I'm just subtracting 5% from the 50 here. This will go to 25 and then we'll bump this to 30. And yeah, they all equal 100, good. And let's compare the portfolios. And again, we're looking from 87 to 2021. We have our different portfolios here, right? And we can look at the returns. I'll try to keep this on as much on one screen as I can. Actually, I'll just pop it up here. We know portfolio one was the one we started with. Portfolio two was the 90-10 portfolio. So our returns went up. Our, our compound annual growth rate bumped. It wasn't a huge difference though. That actually may surprise people uh, that are sort of big into 100% stocks or 90% stocks. Yeah, the returns are higher, but not dramatically so. And um, you know, the standard deviation really pops here. It goes from 12.13 to 13.65. If you're not familiar, you can just look at that as a measure of volatility. The higher uh, the number, the more volatile. And, and when you look at the actual worst year, max drawdown, 49% uh, versus 43, call it 44%, uh, percent, that's uh, pretty significant. Now, if we go down to the 70-30, uh, of course, the returns are lower uh, and the uh, compound annual growth rate drops below 16, still not a huge difference. And yet the standard deviation, look at this, it drops from 12 or 13 all the way down to about 10 and a half, 10.65. That's a pretty significant drop. So I show you this so that you can figure out what's best for you. I will tell you when I was, <laughs> let me come back to the screen here. When I was younger and didn't have as much gray hair, I was 90-10 and it served me just well. Would my life have changed if I were 80-20? No, probably not. It probably wouldn't have changed much if I were a 70-30 portfolio which is roughly, I'm probably more like 80-20 right now, moving towards 70-30, but of course I'm probably older than most people watching this video. You have to make this decision for yourself. I can't answer that question for you. You can certainly go out and talk to an advisor and he or she will give you their views, but at the end of the day, even then you have to make that decision. I personally think all of these portfolios that I've shown you, and let's go back to the screen, uh, are perfectly reasonable choices. I would tend to be closer to the 80-20 or 90-10 portfolio, but that doesn't make it right. That just makes it right for me. But this gives you an idea of the data and the volatility and the returns. Do, are we guaranteed for all of this to repeat itself over the next 30 years? Of course not. We all know that uh, that's not true. Uh, uh, but I think it's the best data we have. It's drawn over a long period of time and it gives you a sense uh, of what to expect. Um, so I think 80-20 is a sweet spot. But, but again, uh, you know, you have to make this decision for yourself, but there is the data to make it. Now, having said all of that, the next big question is, what funds do we use? Well, if you're investing in a 401k, your choice of funds are determined by your employer and whoever they have managing your funds. Let me say one thing about that. So far for the U.S. stocks, we've looked at a total stock market index fund. I guess it's possible in your 401k, you don't have that option, but you do have an S&P 500 index fund. It's a perfectly reasonable choice. Yes, it doesn't have you know 3,600 companies in it. It has around 500, uh, but it's still incredibly diverse. And frankly, the long-term returns and volatility of an S&P 500 index fund are very, very similar to a total U.S. stock market fund. So don't worry about that decision. You obviously have to make it if you're outside of a 401k and you can pick either or you're inside a 401k and they have both options. Don't lose sleep over the decision. I personally would go with a total stock market fund because it includes some mid cap and small cap, but it's, it's not frankly probably gonna make much of a difference to your portfolio over the long term. If you're outside of 401k, now you have some choices to make. You go with Vanguard, you go with someone else. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to leave a link below the video to the article I've written on this uh, very um, uh, topic. In fact, I'll actually show it to you on my iPad here. Believe it or not, I take some notes before these videos. And you can see some of the, the options that I'm going to show you uh, that you'll see in the article. Here's uh, Vanguard, both mutual funds and their ETFs. Uh, here's Fidelity. They have both their zero funds as well as their sort of, I could call them more standard funds. By the way, 
their standard funds like Fidelity Total Market Index follows a well-known index. Their zero funds actually follow a, a, a Fidelity proprietary index. It's one of the reasons uh, they don't charge expense ratios. In any event, maybe that's for another video. Uh, Charles Schwab, I've got the Thrift Savings Plan. I know a lot of you uh, work for the government. Uh, you're in the military. Thank you for your service. You work at the postal, post office. Thank you for your service. Uh, Thrift Savings Plan is here, T. Rowe Price. So um, I give you specific uh, funds with the tickers, with the ticker symbols, so that you can build out a three fund portfolio regardless of where you invest and what you want to invest in. All of these are low cost, uh, so I think they're all great uh, options. All right, now having said that, I mentioned M1 Finance, and I want to actually show you how to build the, the three fund portfolio inside of M1 Finance, and then I'm going to talk to you about why I like M1 Finance so much. And frankly, Vanguard, if you're listening, please add some of these tools to, to Vanguard. It would really make my day and it would make our lives as investors a heck of a lot easier. All right, so let's head over to the computer again. And we're in, well, we were in my M1 Finance account. Let me log back in. So you'll notice I have a big fat zero. I was using this for a while to test it out. I actually love it moved my invest the, the small amount of investments I had in there back to Vanguard. What I'm actually going to do is be moving over to here about $20,000, which, which represents uh, my investments in the money that I've saved from credit card rewards. I save, we save and invest all of our credit card rewards. We've done that now. I think we're in year three and we're up to 20 grand. And so I'll have more about that in a future video. But here's what I want to do. Um, going to actually click over to my joint account so my, my wife can be involved. <laughs> um, and so creating any portfolio in M1 Finance is very easy, but let's quickly create uh, a three fund portfolio. So the first thing you want to do is come over to this research tab and we can look at my pies. That's what they call them. You can think of each pie as a portfolio or even your own mutual fund. You can see I've got a four or five and six fund portfolio. I'm going to show you those in a minute, and I'm going to give you links to all of these in the notes below the video. But let's create a new pie. So we'll come over here, and we have to search for, in this case, I'm going to use Vanguard ETFs. So for the total stock market, it's VTI, and here it is, and I'm going to add it to the basket. Uh, then I'm going to uh, search for, I know the ticker on this, but let's assume I didn't. This is the Vanguard total international stock. We can actually search by name, total international, oh, here it is, comes right up, VXUS, add that to our basket, and then the last one, I'll just use the, the, um, the ticker, BND, it's their total bond fund, add that to the basket, and we can see down here, there are all the three funds, we're going to add them, whoops, here we go, and uh, here they are. Now, you'll notice uh, that what they've done, they've pre-filled the percentages, uh, for us. We're going to change that. One thing to keep in mind, and this is actually a, a, a beautiful beautiful feature of M1 Finance, one of the reasons I like it. If you invest whatever, 25 bucks, 100 bucks, a million bucks, doesn't matter, into this pie in your account, M1 Finance will automatically divide it up by whatever percentages you set. The other thing they'll do is Let's imagine you do that and a year later, the markets have gone up, they've gone down, and your allocation is sort of out of whack now. Whatever you set it at, it's changed. Stocks have gone up, bonds have gone down or whatever. And you decide to invest more. Maybe you're doing a monthly plan or whatever. When you make a new investment, they don't just divide it equally among the different investments. They, they look at which uh, investments ha have deviated from your plan and they invest your new money accordingly to start to move your, your portfolio back into alignment with your initial asset allocation. That is a beautiful thing. It's just one of the, uh, the other features that I love about M1 Finance. There's one more when, as, as it come, when it comes to rebalancing that I'll get to in a minute, but let's first, let's get these target percentages correct. So if we edit it, uh, we get this nice feature and we can change this. So we're gonna follow the Boglehead standard uh, approach which is an 80-20 with 50% in U.S. stocks and then uh, 30 uh, in uh, international stocks. And we're going to give it a name. Let's call it the three fund portfolio. And we'll save it. And we're done. 
It's that simple. Now, um, I, like as I said, I will give you a link to this uh, a portfolio. You, if you're an existing M1 fi uh, finance uh, uh, account holder, you can use this in your current account. If you're new, uh, you can add this as part of creating an account, or you can just check out these portfolios, even if you're investing somewhere else, uh, just to get an idea of, of, of how I've built them. Again, I, I'm not suggesting these are right for everyone. You have to make your own choice as to what's best for you, but I think these are great core uh, uh, portfolios or could even represent the entire uh, portfolio. And um, one thing I'll mention, let's go back to the pies. Let me open this one back up. Uh, you don't see it here because I haven't added this to my portfolio or added money. But the, the one other thing that makes M1 Finance so great is that you can literally click a button and it will rebalance your pie, as they call it, your portfolio for you. You know, there's no getting the spreadsheet out or the paper and the pencil and figuring out, okay, I need to sell how many shares of this fund to, to get over to that fund. I, you just click a button. Now, if it's in a taxable account, you want to make sure you're aware of the tax consequences of rebalancing. In an IRA, for example, of course, there aren't any. And so, again, this is where I hope Vanguard watches this video. Maybe I'll shoot it over to my friends at Vanguard. I mean, why can't Vanguard have this? One-click rebalancing. It's not that complicated. Um, yeah, if I were starting from scratch, I, that's another reason why I would use M1 Finance. Okay. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we were going to look at how to supercharge your... Um, uh, your three fund portfolio. This is not necessary. I think a three fund portfolio is fantastic. Uh, you could just go with that. But uh, I tend to use a six fund portfolio. Again, in M1 Finance, it'd be incredibly easy. But even in a traditional broker, it's not that hard to manage just six uh, mutual funds. But uh, I think you could add up to three different asset classes to a three fund portfolio to sort of, as I say, you know, supercharge uh, the returns. So let's look at those. We're going to go back to M1 Finance and look at these other pies. Let's start with the four fund portfolio. What I add, you can see it down here, is I add small cap value and I add, add it 10%. Uh, so I drop my total US uh, market uh, fund from 50 to 40 and I add the 10% to small cap value. What we know from history is that small cap value, while it's a little more volatile, uh, it, it, it's expected returns are higher uh, than, say, an S&P 500. Now, not always. The last few years, large growth companies have just been on fire, as we know. But long term, small cap value tends to do really well. It, you know, you could go with just a, a small cap that's not tilted towards value. I think that's a reasonable choice as well. In this pie, though, and I'm still getting used to, by the way, calling these pies. In this pie, uh, I, I use small cap value. And uh, what I'm going to do in the article for this podcast is I've actually done, using the Portfolio Visualizer, some uh, returns analysis. And I'll include images of all that in the article, which you can uh, check out. So that's the four fund. Uh, go back to the pies here. Let's open up the five uh, fund. What I do here, I keep the 10 the ten percent in small cap. You see that here. But I add 10% to emerging markets, and to do that, I lower the international stock uh, to, from 30 to 20. And emerging markets, it's kind of the same argument as small cap value. They're very volatile, uh, but they have high expected returns. And remember, our concern isn't the volatility of any one investment or asset class. Our concern is the volatility of the portfolio as a whole. And what's beautiful about this sort of, um, uh, sort of low cost, asset allocation investing is that you can add a very volatile asset class to a portfolio without increasing significantly the volatility of the portfolio as a whole, because it's just one ingredient in a much bigger uh, portfolio. So if I were going to do five funds, I'd add small cap value and emerging markets. Again, I'll leave a link to this portfolio uh, below the video. And then finally, the last one is a six fund. And what do I add? I add uh, REITs right here. It's VNQ is the ETF version. And to do that, I lower the total stock market fund uh, again from 40 to 30. One thing I would caution you is that you don't want to own REITs in a taxable account. It, it's, it's brutal on taxes. They have to distribute 90% of their, their uh, profit as income uh, to maintain their, their, the, the benefits that the IRS gives REITs. 
and it's typically taxed as ordinary income. So you'd only want to use this in a, a tax deferred IRA type of account. Um, if you're investing in a taxable account, I wouldn't go with this six fund portfolio. I would stick with a five fund portfolio, or I would simply have my real estate allocation in a different account, You know, either the 401k if I have one, or an IRA, but you don't want to hold REITs uh, in a taxable account. Well, there you go. I, I know it's a deep dive, but I think it's important that we not only understand what a three fund portfolio is, but we understand, you know, is it diversified? What are the expected returns? How do we create one? What are the asset allocation options that we have? You know, part of that is taking the mystery and fear out of investing. This isn't complicated. Uh, but, you know, there is some things to know. And once you know it, it's kind of easy. You know, when someone says, hey, my small cap value fund did blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what a small cap value fund is. So that's helpful. In any event, there you go. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. Again, I'll have a ton of links below as well. And if you haven't subscribed to the video and you've made it this far, I mean, why not subscribe now? What do you got to lose? Hey, thanks for watching. And until next time, remember... The best thing money can buy is financial freedom.